in, um, in the book of Proverbs, and Proverbs is, um, you know, even here, I think we get uh, six, what, nine verses here, and eat, you know, you can read them collectively, Proverbs, and they can just be like, hey, those are some nice, pithy statements. But you could really take every proverb and just, like, spend time with it and go, go deep with it. And it being so rich, so I just I want to do that with just one of them right now. And um, you know, you you may remember the beginning of the month. I think it was yeah, the beginning of the month. Uh, we were Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and he he said uh, in chapter three, he said, "Let be careful that no one deceive himself." So we talked about self deception, and you know, I we 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 talked about Saint Gregory. Talked a lot about his, in his pastoral rule and in in. in, in put a lot of emphasis on his, in the community, the importance of being careful of self-deception. And I also mentioned then John Henry Newman, he talked about it in terms of secret faults, self-deception, secret faults. And you know, I just want to go in a little bit more detail uh, on, on what John Henry Newman said with regards to secret faults. He says, most people are content with general and vague impressions concerning their real state. So this is all, I didn't read the proverb, or the proverb that I wanted to look at was that second proverb. It says, all the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves his hearts. Like, so all the ways of a man might be right in his own eyes, but really, like, he's blinded. He, he, or as John Henry Newman would say, he's got secret faults. They're just, they're not known to him. And... One of those reasons is John Henry Newman. He says most people are con they're just content with general and vague impressions about themselves because real self-knowledge, he says, takes time and effort. He says we're busy in the world running around and what little leisure time that we do have, we readily devote to less severe and worrisome employment. I mean, this was, it just, just think of, I mean, I even think of my own, at the end of the day, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're, we're more inclined, as he says, to to devote time to less severe and worrisome employment. Self-knowledge, real deep self-knowledge, in which he calls that we need to be in, takes great effort and self-reflecting. He says it's painful, so he says most people don't do it. They don't do it to the extent that they need to. And a month ago, we talked about self-love. He brings up the point. I just wanted to mention two other ones that he says. He says, another reason why men and women have secret faults is because of one is the force of habit. He says, conscience at first warns against sin, but if we disregard it, it soon ceases to upbraid us. And thus sins, once known to us, in time become secret sins. They become secret faults. And he goes on and says, the more guilty we are, the less we know it. For the oftener we sin, the less we're distressed about it. And so that's just, so he's speaking into here, you know, the, the deadening of the conscience, like the, the, the kind of the muffling the conscience, so that over time it becomes, the conscience bothers us less. You know, just expand it for 30 years time, say. You could have something that bothers our conscience less because he says a force of habit. And then the other one, just to share this morning from this proverb, you know, because all the ways of a man may be seen right in his own eyes, but it's, it is the Lord who proves the hearts. He says that another way that men and women have secret faults go, that go unaddressed is because of custom. I think this is really important and it's really telling today. But custom, he says, every single age, every single age has its sins, he says. It's wrong ways. Living in the midst of this affects man. It has a way of pulling the good man into the sinful way of the culture. He says, the most religious men, un unless they are especially watchful, will feel the sway of the fashion of their age and suffer from it unconsciously. And so just think, you know, one thing, you know, that comes to mind right away is just how, the, so 
with an age where we don't, we don't think it to be a fault at all. We don't think it to be a sin at all because it's just so part of the culture or the custom. Think of Sunday mornings. I remember growing up, my, my mom would tell me that everything, like things were closed on Sunday. But so just think how it is with like sports and sports right now. You don't think anything of it to have sports on Sunday morning that might take us away from coming to mass. And it can be one where it's a sec- it becomes a secret fault where it's blinded to me. I don't see it as anything, but it's because of the cusp, because it's the age. Every single age has its sins, its wrong ways. There's a plethora of them. John Henry Newman would say, be, be careful, as, as uh, St. Gregory as well. So as we see in this proverb, all the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves hearts. It's the Lord who discerns hearts. It's the Lord that says what is right, what is wrong, or as John Henry Newman says, the secret faults. And so let us be careful, especially the, maybe those two things that he mentions to, that we highlight today. We can have for, secret faults because of force of habit, We can also have them due to the custom of our age.